Yes, he has a word in his place. Listen, listen, I, I was, God has given me a word for the house, but uh, I was standing in the back just a moment ago and This young man pulled me to the side and he said, Pastor, Minister Hibbler, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> he said, Pastor, I want to say something. I can't sound like it like his daddy. <laughs> And then he pulled me back inside and he said, Pastor, my tooth loose. <laughs> and they've always caught me at the service. And the young man have a calling of his life. Some of y'all probably heard him speak. And You'll see him dance over there next to his dad sometimes. We know that David danced, but sometimes he'll break out of that little Michael Jackson spin, <laughs> and <laughs> and he'll catch he'll catch that spin on anything his daddy planned. He'll just and pull it off real good. I'm like I can't do that, but he can. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm gonna give him a few minutes to come say something. So he said, Pastor, when you call me up called me up by my nickname and he made sure I called he said and he, he I ain't even get a chance to ask him what's the nickname he said mighty man of God <laughs> so at this moment we're going to receive the mighty man of God in this place today amen somebody need to give God praise for the mighty man you got to probably stand down there ain't nobody gonna be able to see you up here that good but Go ahead, so we can see you. So we can see. Come on, I want y'all to point your hand right here and say, God bless, God bless. the mighty man of God. Amen, amen, amen. Did God give us a great day today? Amen. Oh, why did another person try to give the devil something? But when God comes, they will give him the care. But if God was the only one who was here, we would be living happy. We will never be. Now, one person will never be being mad or something. But the Lord, he will still help us even if the devil's here. Then everybody, if y'all love Jesus, Say yes. Now it looks like everybody loves Jesus because we wouldn't have never been loving Jesus. The devil would have been the only one. But when some days the devil was still trying to take over the world, but God, he will still be saving us. Lord, he never be that one man that would never give us no hope. Lord, sometimes he get mad, sometimes he get blessed. But the only time he be happy is when we go to the church. If all these pastors, like Pastor Charles, Pastor, we have all pastors that bless all of us, even God still will never be not one. But who helping us with all these connections? Is this man right here, Deacon Davis? If nobody would never be here blessing the God's house right now, we would have never been blessed. We would have never been doing all this stuff, all the things that he's been blessing us with today. Now, I got to tell you, will God do it? Will God do it? Now, will God do it? Now, Lord, if you see the Lord, you'll still be seeing God. Everybody.
everybody, if we see Lord, we will be happy. We will have a great life today. We will have everything that we will see, Lord. We will bless, Lord. We will pray for Lord. We will do everything for Lord. He will do the same thing to us. We will bless people, and we will bless. Now, if God didn't wasn't here, my grandma would have never been alive. He would have never been alive. We all would have never been alive. This lady right here would never be alive that bless everyone. All these people would never be alive if we saw God and God will see us. If God just blessed us one time, he will bless me. He will bless this man right here. This man right here. And this lady right here. Even will bless this man right here.
all the things about Lord. When the Spirit of the Lord becomes my heart, I will dance like David did. When the Spirit of the Lord becomes my heart, dance like David did. I will dance, dance, will dance like David will dance, will dance, will dance. Come on, somebody give God praise. Come on, give God praise. Out of the mouth of the babies. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to cry in the car. <laughs> God has spoken. Let the church say amen. <laughs> Woo. Listen. <laughs> I smile at this moment because this is what and this is why we preach this is why we teach and when they learn at an age like that that's just a, that's just a taste of what you're going to what's yet to come because there's more to come out of that right there. How, how old is he now? Seven, seven years old. Come on, somebody, give God praise. He's I remember he asked, could he preach when he was five? And you know, he'll come up and say, I want to, I wanted to preach, Pastor. Why you ain't call me up? I said, I didn't know you wanted to preach. And then. I said, you got to let me know when you want to preach. And then, and that was around when he was five and, you know, he had that eager and that, 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 that boldness to come out and do it, you know, because when you're young like that, you're bold like that. Hallelujah. 
So look, I'm going to tell you right now, when you're young like that, you, you don't mind. You'll go up in a snake's den and pull somebody up out of a pit. You'll go up in a lion's den. When you're young like that, you don't care. You, you're not worried about what could hurt you. See, it's mama and daddy that's worried because they know what's in there. But their child don't care what's in there. I got to get my toy. You say my toy in that dog house? I don't care. You say the house is on fire? I'm going to get it. I'm going to. Terry, that's when you know without a shadow of a doubt that he pays attention to his daddy, his grandmother, his mother, and to the preachers that are around him so that he walks in those footsteps. And so, when I think about that kind of love, I think about a man who had a son. When I think about that kind of love, I think about a woman who had a daughter. And how both of their concerns were after they tried everything they brought them to Jesus. We parents, listen, those of you that have your children that's going to be dedicated today, we set aside some time. Look, we're going to, um, the pictures are going to be taken upstairs, but we're going to do everything right here. We have enough time. I just don't want to go over, but God's son of ram a word to an on-time young man. So, Here's what I want to say to the parents, the fathers. We have some fathers in the house. Hallelujah. I know your husband is going to bring your, he's bringing your son. Tell me you need to burn rubber. Text him. Tell him. He, he already know how to drive fast, so I got to tell him to slow down every time I'm in the car. <laughs> Amen. So it's, it's, the thing is, Parents, grandparents, you could be a single mother and you're raising your kids all by yourself. We applaud you on that. Come on, let's give God applause for that. And men play an important role. Because in the Bible, when I was talking about just now, I'm just pointing out that there was a father who had a son who was possessed and he tried everything he even saw those 12 disciples that Jesus had followed him everywhere he went and tried bringing, those, bringing his son to those disciples but those disciples could not cast that devil out of that man's son so the most important thing grandparents and parents is that you have to bring them to Jesus. See, the moral of history was that this kind comes by fasting and praying. How many of y'all know about fasting and praying? Parents, listen up, listen up, listen up, parents, listen up, parents, listen up, listen up, parents, listen up, real close. And grandparents. That your granddaughter, your grandson, and your sons and your daughters are going to get older. They're going to develop their own mind. And when they develop their own mindset, they're going to do what they think is right for them. But here's the thing to this. Here's the catch to this. That that's when we need to lay on our face for our sons and our daughters that's when we need to call on grandmama's prayer. That's when we need to call on daddy's, granddaddy's prayer. That's when we need to call on all those saints' prayers so that our sons and our daughters won't be lost to this dark world. I charge you. Listen. Has he left the house yet? He left, he's on the way? Huh? Okay. All right. 
because I'm going to be calling you all up here in just a moment, and I'm going to have y'all standing here on this podium, pulpit right here. And I'm going to anoint your babies as well as I'm going to anoint you parents. And God is calling y'all to a higher dimension, a higher level. And what y'all see in your arms now is not always going to be that small. Your sons and your daughters are not always going to be that small. They're going to be somebody. And parents, listen real close, listen real close. What you speak into your child life now. Come on, you those parents that know, that those parents that know what you speak into their lives now matters. Now. It matters now. It matters now because I'm going to tell you something because if you have spoken negativity into their lives, then they may just remember that. What daddy told me, I'll never amount to anything. Mama said, I'm just like my daddy. Hallelujah. All of those things right there, all of those things right there matter. But when you start speaking, you're going to be better than me. I, want, I, I declare and decree right now that you're going to exceed my expectations. Everything that I wanted to be, you're going to be. You're going to be great. You're going to be mighty. You're going to be the next president. You're going to be the next first lady. You're going to be. You're going to be. It's the word you have to take out of your vocabulary what you're not going to be. that out and start speaking life start speaking life because look that child life matters because here's the, here's the thing right here we can alter their life by speaking negative words and negative language in their life believe me I'm going to tell you right now a child is watching you mama a child is watching you daddy a, your child is watching you and every step that you make they're going to mimic it Believe me, believe this right now. They may respect you in your presence, but they heard you just curse somebody out. But the minute they turn their back and go to school, somebody is getting cussed out in that school. Hallelujah. Because they're going to use the same language you use. The same language you use. The same language you use. So if you want anything and everything to be different and you want their lives to be perfected, I want you to lift your hand in this room and say, Lord, I declare that my child is somebody. They won't be who I used to be. They will be better. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. Give God praise. <laughs> Pastor Terry, see, we have been on that course that these newborn babies are getting on now. Hallelujah. Because, look, what we realize now, mom and daddy ain't always going to be there. But it's what mom and daddy put in you. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. See, the, the, the fire is going to come from, hallelujah, hallelujah, prophet is April, is that when your child is out there running by themselves, they're here mama saying, you can do it. You can make it. You're bigger than this. You can break this. You can... See, they'll be the ones that while they're running their race, they'll hear grandmama's voice echoing at the finish line. Don't give up. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare give up. They'll be the ones at the finish line praying in Zion saying, you can make it, daughter. You can make it, son. Hallelujah. You're more than a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror. You will or you are victorious. You're bigger than this. Hallelujah. Oh, 
Hallelujah. I was going to say this, and I want to say this too about a mother's love. It's something, it's something, it's something that we as men, we love our children, but it's a difference. It's a difference when it comes to that mother and her love. Reminded of a story in St. Matthews. I'm just going to talk just a little bit about this. And this mother was a Seraphonician woman. Matthews chapter 15, Seraphonician woman. Seraphonician woman. And she came to Jesus on a mission. A mother on a mission. How many of you know that a mother would do what they can to save their child? I, I, I've heard incredible stories of mothers lifting cars up just to save their child. Heard incredible stories that no matter what was going on in their child's life, that mothers would do whatever they can to get to that child this woman the Seraphonician woman she goes to she, she, she finds Jesus and she goes and she cries out to him her daughter is grievously vexed with a devil those same 12 disciples I told y'all about that the man brought to Jesus were the same disciples that told Jesus to send her away she cried out to us and here's the thing Pastor Terry she does not leave until she get her blessing. As a mother, come hell or high water for that child, they will walk through fire in spite of getting burned and skinched, hallelujah, just to save that child. How many of y'all mothers have went through some fire in this place already? Hallelujah. Thank, have done some dangerous things, some things that probably put your life on line just to save your child. So this woman, this woman, this woman, she was, she was, she was not considered an uh, Israelite. She was considered a Seraphonician, a, a Gentile. She was not one of the ones considered in line for the blessing. People, women, people are not always going to look at you like you are blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes women, you, you have to demand, hallelujah, respect. Anybody understand what I'm talking about? Have to demand respect. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because not everybody going to respect you for your worth. <laughs> Woo hallelujah. So, so. This woman, she didn't, she didn't give up on the fact that Jesus didn't say a word to her. The Bible says, and he said not a word. And the Bible says, then she worshiped him. Mothers, grandmothers, y'all that are, y'all already been down that Zion road. Y'all know what it means to worship, right? Y'all know what it means to fall on your faith. I'm talking to, I'm, right now I'm preaching to the young women with the young babies in this place right now. Hallelujah. It's about falling on your face for a hard-headed child, for a stiff-necked child. But to you, that child is somebody. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So, the moral of this story is, women, is that this woman... In chapter 15 of St. Matthews, she had unbelievable faith. She knew her child's worth, even if it cost her life. Hallelujah. So, you must understand this one thing. That people may talk about you and your child. But you are the one raising that child. People are going to probably even say that you, you ain't even raising that child right. 
But who's to tell you how to raise your own child? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Have anybody ever tried to tell y'all how to raise your children? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But look at your children now. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Look at your children now. So, while this woman was worshiping, Jesus said this to her. Why should I give the children's bread to a dog? <laughs> Whoo! That's in the word. That's in the word. That's in the word. Why should I give the children's bread to a dog? But I'm going to tell you, Pastor Terry, how bold this woman is to speak to Jesus. She said, even the children, even the dogs desire the crumbs that fall it from their master's table. Listen, listen, the crumbs are just enough. Pastor Terry, I don't know if you ever experienced this, but my mother did. Hallelujah. My mother did. She experienced having just one can in the cabinet. No meat in the refrigerator. And then look down underneath, down sometime in the refrigerator, the bottom of the refrigerator, you'll find just enough meal, just enough flour. Hallelujah. And then back then, they'll send across the street just to get the leftover onions. Might just got a half an onion, but just enough. Just enough. I don't care if you got crumbs left. God, the lady said, even the dogs desires the crumbs that fall from their master tables. And this sent Jesus to another level. He said, oh, woman, great is thou faith. Be it done unto thee as thou wilt. And the Bible says at that very hour, her daughter was healed. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but when you're going through a test, when you're going through trouble, when you're going through trials, say, Lord, all 